the city had always been reminiscent of romance and love. It always smelled of croissants and coffee in the morning. There were shops with fragrant flowers on the streets. It was along these French streets that Gerald rode to school, then to university on his bicycle. He had a good and wealthy family. The parents loved each other very much. He was the only child in the family. His mom worked as a stylist in a fashion house. She was often approached for advice and services by famous foreign artists. Gerald's father was a jeweler. His work brought a good income. They lived in the city center in a two-story apartment. Everything went well in their family. When Gerald turned 16, his parents decided to buy him a bike. It had been his dream since his childhood. He never missed a single speedway race. He regularly watched them on the internet. His father sometimes took his son to motorcycle races. No one could have thought that this passion for motorcycles could completely change his fate. One day, as usual, Gerald was returning home from the university on his motorcycle. It was raining cats and dogs. Visibility on the road was poor. The glass on his helmet was heavily fogged up. Without stopping, he tried to rub it with his hand, but... That was a big mistake. Gerald skidded and lost control. His motorcycle crashed into a pole standing on the side of the road. When the guy woke up, he was already in the ward of the city hospital. His parents were sitting near him. They looked at their son, barely holding back tears. Their only son was on the verge of life and death. They thought it was their fault and shouldn't have given Gerald the motorcycle at such an early age. According to the law, the rights to motor vehicles were issued until the age of majority, already from the age of 16, and in fact, they considered him still a child. He had little memory of what had happened before the hospital. Honey, you got into an accident, Mom said in a trembling voice. How do you feel? Where do you hurt? asked his father. It hurts everywhere. Gerald said with a smirk, and the parents smiled back. He was a cheerful guy. Gerald never lost his heart. Others could only dream about such an ability, being able to see the problem from the positive side. That accident changed him completely. Gerald's constant mood for the best has sunk into the deep ground. In addition to fractures and abrasions, Gerald's face was severely damaged and disfigured. He was not shown mirrors for a long time to let him recover and not worry ahead of time. He immediately underwent surgery, but it did not significantly change his appearance. When he began to feel better, his parents and the doctor had to tell the young man everything. With that face, he could not measure himself and did not see anything positive anywhere else. His appearance became unrecognizable. How could this happen? Why did they buy a motorcycle for me, thought Gerald. A few months later, Gerald was discharged. He could walk, eat, and write. He did everything a regular person would do. But his face was not the same. His parents removed all the mirrors in the house. They decided to put it off until Gerald himself would want it. Gerald was often laughed at the university, and he was called a freaky face. Only a few could look into his eyes. It was even worse for the guy. One classmate from the faculty, whose name was Chucky, often bullied Gerald, tossed threatening notes in his locker, tripped him, and called the poor fellow in front of everyone. Gerald felt awkward and flawed, and he could not fight back. Gerald began to walk with his head down, and he grew his hair so that the bangs covered his face. The guy started wearing a bandana on his face's lower part, so he tried to hide his mutilated face. Many teachers have radically changed their attitude towards the young guy. Some began to look at him as an outcast. They often gave terrible marks as the guy stopped answering in the group. He didn't feel like being given special attention. Others began to feel sorry for Gerald, showing his weakness and defenselessness. An intense change in attitude toward the guy were very noticeable. Thus, the guy realized that he would no longer have a life as before 
as long as more attention was paid to his face than to himself. One day he came home and told his parents that he wanted to leave the university. What happened, dear? Mom asked calmly. I want to go to a new place. Which one? I want to become a plastic surgeon. Mom was surprised by the step of her son, but she did not question him. It all became clear to her. Gerald's face did not give him peace. He wanted to return to his old life by any means. In such a situation, his mother could only support Gerald. Good. We will discuss your new class with your father in the evening. Since now is the middle of the year, you must go to paid education or wait another year. Thanks, Gerald said softly. Parents supported their son in everything from an early age, forbade him little, and spoiled him. And finally, the guy was transferred to the University of Surgery. Students and teachers' attention to Gerald began to be expressed even worse than in the formal educational institution. He was ready for it. It was important for him to achieve his goal, to correct his appearance, to become the same guy from Paris. Some were interested in his appearance. Others, from the point of view of professional interest, wanted to take a closer look at his face hiding under his bandana. And one day, at one of the lessons, plastic surgery professor Mr. Green called Gerald to the blackboard. In front of the whole class, he asked the guy to take off his mask and show his face. Gerald was entirely at a loss. He tried not to look at students and rarely spoke to them after the accident. And even in front of the whole audience of people unfamiliar to him, Will asked him to reveal his face. He stood in front of the class, revealed his face, and silently left the auditorium. Only in the corridor, he heard the laughter of the guys and Will's phrase, which sunk right into his heart. Anything can be done in your situation, bud. I'm sorry, but you'd better open your face up. You won't walk around with a rag on your face all the time, the teacher shouted after him and laughed at his back. Gerald would not have paid any attention to it. He was used to insults and smirks from teachers and students. But he knew that Mr. Green was a professor of medical science who had been involved in surgery for a long time, especially plastic surgery. Namely, Gerald dreamed of studying with Mr. Green. He hoped that he had a chance to correct his appearance. The guy was ready for hundreds of operations. He was ready to go under the knife even if they threatened his life. He read a lot about Green and his achievements on the internet. Gerald often looked at the before and after photographs of his operations. The people he operated on changed drastically. Gerald's dreams and goals were shattered in an instant. He asked to be transferred to another group, where he could continue his studies. A drop of hope and respect for his parents, who helped him to enter, gave Gerald a reason to continue what he started. In the university cafe, where he usually dined alone, a girl unexpectedly sat next to him. Her name was Lily. Hi, she said smilingly. If you came to laugh at me, then please leave, Gerald said. I was there. Green did a terrible job, she answered. Gerald raised his eyes, and the guy saw how tenderly and with a pure soul the girl looked directly into his eyes. From that moment, Gerald was no longer alone. Lily became friends with him and did not let the guy get offended. Lily gave Gerald a university tour and showed him how everything worked there. Gerald began to study from the very beginning. Their shared interest in surgery brought them together. He became more confident with Lily, and he began to open up. She always protected him and did not give offense. He started to make friends at the university. They looked at the appearance of the guy differently. In the lessons of anatomy, students had to share a lot. Therefore, the guy's face no longer caused much surprise. A couple of months after graduation, they began to train in medical institutions, and Gerald gained experience from excellent doctors. It was interesting for them to work with him, especially to be always together. They became very close with Lily during this time. They didn't get tired of spending days and nights with each other. 
five years later, Lily and Gerald got married. They managed to start their medical institution up. Gerald's parents helped him. Gerald and Lily had recruited a staff of good doctors. Together, they performed operations, and Gerald and Lily did what they loved. Of course, Gerald's face also got a lot of work done. He had to undergo several operations, which gradually led to miraculous results. It was impossible to restore the face to the ideal, but it turned out close to it. Gerald's beloved wife and his friend from the faculty worked on it together for long hours. They were aces in their field. Gerald completely trusted his friends. Over time, he no longer had those scars and distorted face. Gerald's sense of awkwardness and shyness vanished with them. He cut his bangs and became proud of their work. It was seen as a fundamental change in him, inside and out. His goal had been achieved. The guy's face was back to normal. All his and Lily's efforts were not in vain. Only one thing did not give him peace. More precisely, one person who once tried to kill his hope. It was Professor Will Green. Many years later, he returned to the university and went to Green's auditorium. He was at his regular lecture. Gerald listened to what the professor was saying to his students. He waited until the end of the lecture and approached Green. Hello, Gerald said. Good afternoon. Do I know you, young man? Green asked. I was at your lecture once, about seven years ago. You asked me to come to the blackboard and reveal my face to everyone. Green remembered that unusual guy. He was surprised and couldn't believe his eyes. Everything you said in lectures is old information. Science and technology have already stepped forward, Gerald said. Will Green was offended and depressed at the same time. His scientific work, applauses, and discoveries were a thing of the past. He was a good surgeon, he thought. The key word was, was. The same could not be said of Gerald. The fate and strong character of the guy helped him become what he was. The support of friends and relatives gave Gerald hope and incentive to achieve his goals. Saying these words, Gerald left the auditorium with a smile on his face. Green was the one who was standing there shocked and emerging into his deep silence with a sad, smurfy face.